I stopped at the red light on Bird Road. It was about time for the 11 o'clock news, just after a short but effective electrical storm. The creatures of the night began to swarm back into the streets and out of their hiding places. The engine in my beat-up Cadillac, black chrome with suicide doors, was rumbling in dismay at the weight. I glanced around the corner. In a wheelchair was a legless man. In my head, I have always called him Larry. His short hair stuck up all around his head, and he had no teeth. In one strong fist, he grasped a beer. He used the other to wheel himself in small circles. In his lap, nestled between two stumps, was a red plastic cup with spare change. Occasionally, he would place the beer can inside the cup and roll up to the cars. Inside the cars, the drivers would immediately roll up their windows and stare dead ahead until he passed. Once in a while, someone would drop a few coins in his cup. Larry'd smile and wheel on, cash or not. In the second lane right next to me was a prostitute. She couldn't have been more than 17. Tiny, in a jacked up old Mustang with a dangling muffler and a blown out back window. She was wearing a pink shirt held up by spaghetti straps. Blonde hair, which used to be called teased, now just referred to as matted. She had huge green eyes caked with yesterday, last week's makeup. She was a cheap caricature of Hollywood hookers but she had the most beautiful mouth I'd ever seen. Full lips on the right side of puffy, heart shaped with a small pout, proud but not pretentious. Perfectly even, surprisingly, considering what they must go through each day. She had dressed them in the most sublime shade of red. Matte finished, not glossy or gummy, they presented themselves to the world. In between the lips perched a Marlboro, the end of the fresh, unlit cigarette boasted a match to those lips down to the color. Mary wheeled along. The lipstick lady played with her smoke. I began hoping the light wouldn't change. I could feel some excitement. Maybe leftover electricity, but maybe something more. Slowly, he wheeled toward her. I could feel the opposite traffic, trying to beat the yellow light, the cursing of the red light. Then I saw the lipstick lady raise her Harley lighter to the end of the Marlboro. Flick. Draw in a breath. Then slowly slide a pale, slim arm out the window. Her car began to roll. Larry reached out. And for a brief eternal moment. Their fingers touched. The cigarette changed hands. As the light turned green, I did not move and neither did she. And deep in the eye of the cacophony of screaming and swearing all around me, we waited for Larry to put the smoke to his lips and inhale erotically. He rolled backwards into the dark, and the lipstick lady and I drove on. <laughs>